Good evening, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Uh, this is yours truly here <clears throat> uh, for our last Matt from Comics. And uh, this is just a, a page of Road Warrior Drake that I'm working on. I'm just fixing her face because, um, you know, I didn't necessarily like it. I'm trying to keep the artwork consistent. But anyway, um, so this is a video I'm doing in response to um, the, latest, the latest video from the comic book cut where he addresses me, doesn't name me, but he addresses me. And he wasn't nasty or anything. He wasn't like being a jerk about about stuff. But he says some things that I have to take into question. And this will probably be my last video about him, but I just need to address this because I, I, I would like for him to just understand that he's talking out of both sides of his mouth. And I'm not trying to be nasty to him about it. I'm not trying to destroy his person because I don't know him personally. So I have no personal beef with him. I have none. But he has an issue with criticism. He offers critiques, but he doesn't take criticism as uh, too well. And if you're going to be in the business of critiquing other people's work, you need to be prepared for the fire yourself, especially if you're going to make yourself a public figure. If you're going to be on YouTube quite often, you need to prepare yourself for people to critique you as well. You can't just uh, base your channel upon critiquing other people's work and other YouTube channels, and then when someone says something about you, you get offended, offended and then you're blocking people left and right. Which, by the way, you can't speak out against censorship and then promote it. You, you can't do that. Okay. Um, this is just, to me, it's positive because I, I really want him to do well. I don't want him to, to fail. I want him to succeed. I really do. I want him to succeed. So uh, this is not meant to bring him down, but he needs to take criticism, especially if you're going to receive, you know, give it. You have to take criticism if you're going to give it. Otherwise, you're in the wrong business. And, and you can't give him this crap about how you get to, you know, you do what you want because, yeah, you can do whatever you want, but so can other people. If you have the right to say whatever you want on your channel, people have the right to say whatever they want about your channel. That's America. That's that's the America we live in. That's also the New York attitude. The New York attitude is you got something to say to me, I'll say something to you and vice versa. You can't just have it one way. It's, it's a two-way street. But I want to play a couple minutes of the video because I want to address certain points in it. And there's something he says about – and look, um, before I play the video, he does bring up how – one person made a nasty comment about his mother. And um, if that is true, I don't co-sign with that. I, I think that when you make comments about people's family, I agree with the comic book. It is off limits. Mothers, wives, children, those are all off limits. Those, those are, those are um, how you say, uh, base, baseless and um, bush league. That's what it is. It's a bush league move to attack someone's family. And he should have the right to say something about it or defend against it. I had no problem with that. But he's blocking people that just have anything to say about him, period. And, and including, by the way, that umbrella guy, Tug, which I showed you on my previous video, where Tug himself uh, stated that the comic book had him blocked. So, he, I mean, he talks about him, but then he blocks him. So it makes no sense. But, okay, so I want to play um, a couple minutes of the video. So this is his latest video, Censorship in the Comic Industry, Diversity, Comics, and YouTube. Um, now I want you to hear these comments, and then I'm going to address each point. This is this. And I've said, uh, <clears throat> I said from the very beginning that uh, that this was a great channel. I, I was saying that probably by the time I got to subscriber number 50, 60, 70, I was saying that this was a great channel. And that the things I was doing here... No other channel was doing. Okay, stop right there. Um, there's nothing wrong with praising your channel. I mean, you have to be confident. I, I totally understand that. Being confident, um, if you're not confident about what the work you do, people are going to see into that, and they're not going to be as confident for you. So there's nothing wrong with being confident in your work. However, when you say things like what you're doing on your channel, no, nobody else has done, again, as I stated in my, my, my previous video, you review comic books, so does everyone else. You talk about sports, so does everybody else. You critique other YouTubers, so does everybody else. The only thing that I have not verified yet, and this is probably the only thing you can probably claim, is that I haven't seen other YouTubers shout out new subscribers, which is a good thing. You know, that, it, that's a good thing. I, I do commend you for that. It, it shows um, appreciation. So that's a good thing. I, I totally understand that. But again, you can't tell me that what you're doing, no one else is doing. That's not that's not true. You're not again. You review comic books. A lot of people do. You talk about sports. A lot of people do. You know you, you can't you can't say that. It's not, it's, 
you know, the one thing that, that you do bring the different is your personality. Yeah, because that's you. You're you. No one else is you but you. So yeah, that that part is true. You know, if you want to say you bring your own spin, that's a hundred percent true, absolutely. But you can't say that your content is unique. It's not that unique, my friend. It's not. And again, you got to know what your strengths are and sell those. Like you, you have people on uh, you yourself. Like, like you're gonna be truthful to yourself and honest about yourself and who you are as a person. That's fine. People will resonate with that. But when you go beyond and say, "Oh, I bring unique content," um, again, you lose people with that because it's just not entirely true. But let me continue on. And. And now I have to sort of, because I criticize other YouTubers about uh, their mediocre content and their mediocre uh, presentation. Stop right there. Okay. Again, so you're talking about other, about mediocre YouTubers and their mediocre content. So when someone criticizes your work, you get all butthurt. It's like, how can you criticize other people? But then when they criticize you, you get butthurt and you start blocking people left and right. That doesn't make any sense. That, that, that makes you out to be a, a, a bully. You're just as bad as the the comic book pros, like they can dish, but they can't take it. Like you you, you have to expect blowback if you're gonna start attacking other channels as mediocre, and and other channels as losers. You can't just be all offended and butthurt when someone calls you out on it and says, "What well, what about your channel? What about your stuff?" You can't do that. If you go into attack, you're gonna be attacked. And I and I don't think what I'm doing is attacking you. I'm offering you some criticism, my friend. I'm telling you. What you should and shouldn't be doing so that you can build a healthier lifespan on YouTube. You know, you have 800 subscribers, but your view count is below what it should be based on that number. I'm just saying, but let me continue on. There's more than one YouTuber, okay, that I was talking about, about four or five of them. And I feel that it, that I have been talking about things, about doing great things, and thinking about doing great things here at the hut. And that has not changed. Now I get a little attention for myself. I get invited to some channels. I made a big deal out of it. This was a big deal for me. Because it wasn't something I was looking for. It wasn't something I was expecting to do. And so when I get into my get into the 700s and I do my video of, of these mediocre channels and I said that, everybody started losing their minds. It's like that line from the dark. Okay, movie. hold on. So... You're surprised because you criticized "quote unquote" mediocre YouTube channels, and you didn't think people was gonna say something about it. I mean, you poke at people, and you didn't think people were gonna poke back at you. Um, uh, look, if you want to build your channel attacking other YouTubers, you know you have that right because it's freedom of speech, and and it's your channel. You can do whatever you want with your channel. What I don't get is why you're so surprised that people are reacting the way they are. Again, you went after "quote unquote" mediocre YouTube channels. And when they go back at you, you get all butthurt. It, it, it's, it, does, it doesn't compute. Like, come on, man. Like, you can't critique people and not expect them to critique back at you. Dark Knight. Nobody gets upset if I make fun of Max Osagio. And nobody bats an eyelash when I make fun of uh, Richard C. Meyer or I goof on uh, Ethan Van Skyver. Yeah, but you're not calling Richard C. Meyer, Ethan Van Skyber mediocre channels. You're not. You're not all right offending them. If anything, you've been kissing their asses because, in your mind, that's how you're trying to build your channel by jumping on their coattails, which is fine. I mean, if it works, it works. But that's what you're doing. You're not. You're not calling them mediocre. You're not really bagging on them. That's not the same as calling other channels mediocre and bagging on them, and then blocking them. You know, when anyone has anything to say about you, you block them. But then you go and say what you say about other people. That 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 doesn't make any sense. But anyway, everybody loses their minds. And the quote from the Dark Knight. We get it. Whatever. Let's go on. Wait, hold on a second. Okay, so you say you goofed on the Abrolin guy, but according to him, you blocked him. <laughs> Again, look at my previous video where I showed the exact quote from the Abrolin guy, where he says you blocked him on Twitter. So you went beyond blocking him. You basically sh censored him from your from your stream. Anyway, the bursting comes and Ethan. I did a whole video on them, goofing on them. Nobody bad an eyelash. But then there's like this line where you can't cross. Why? You know. Now, <clears throat> I are encouraged to do on YouTube. I am not part of any group. I've said that many times. 
Yeah, you, you're not a part of any group, but then you try to be a part of a group. You try to be a part of the Ethan Van Skyver Diversity Comics crowd. So that's not entirely genuine for you to say that. You know for a fact you're trying to appeal to that crowd. You're trying to appeal to that group. So you can't come out here and say, oh, I'm not a part of any group when that's baloney. You're trying to be a part of that group, which is fine. That's fine. No one should, comp should criticize you for that. But don't get upset when people call you out on it. It's just it is what it is. I mean, you, you for, for example, you use the Comicsgate tag on your Twitter page, and then you claim that you were on Comicsgate. Well, then why did you use it? Why would you use Comicsgate as a hashtag if you weren't Comicsgate? Unless you were trying to court the Comicsgate crowd, which in essence meant you were trying to be a part of the crowd. Again, as people, as human beings, we are uh, relational. You know, no one is really an island onto themselves. So it's natural to say you want to be part of a specific crowd, especially one that caters to you or one that you find some kind of kinship with. That's normal. That's natural. That's part of human nature. But you can't go around saying, oh, I'm not part of any crowd because it's baloney, especially when you've been tagging the big guys and you've been trying to jump on their coattails. Let me continue. And this goes to this whole thing of censorship. All right. Uh, I am not going to be told what to say. And what not to say on my channel. Nobody's telling you what to say, what not to say in your channel. They're offering you advice. You obviously have the, the final call on what you can and cannot say. But the problem is, is that you're telling people they can't say anything about your channel, period. So in, in, in other ways, you're basically offering a, a, your version of censorship, and you're telling people what they can and cannot say. So it's like you're talking – again, you're talking out both sides of your mouth. You want the right to say what you want to say, but then you want to take away that right from other people, especially when you block them. It's like you don't want to hear what people have to say. So instead, you block them, but then you cry because you feel like you're not allowed to say what you want to say on your channel. Uh, again, you have the right to say whatever you want to say on your channel, but don't get upset when people have something to say about it too. It's like it, you can't it, – it's a free society, and people have the right to say what they want to say. Anyway. And and I'm not going to uh, – I, I do not in any way – and what did they – and and how do they have the right? To tell people what to do and not what to do. And this goes through a good portion of our society. And, Let me fast forward a little bit. And of course, I always say, you don't have to watch my channel. which means Okay, stop. Uh, so he's going with that argument that if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. You know, who, you know who says that? You know who says that? The comic book pros. If you don't like what I make, don't buy it. How many times have I heard that on Twitter? If you don't like our material, don't buy it. How many times has Marvel said, if you don't like it, don't buy it? How many times has Lucasfilm said, you don't like our Star Wars films? Don't watch it. It's the same tactic. It's like, you don't, if you don't like what I do, I'm above your criticism. Don't look at it. Don't watch it. But then it's like, you know what? Your channel is based on reviewing other people's work. You, you uh, critique other people's work, but then when they critique your work, you get all upset about it, about it. It's like, you know, if you don't like comic books, don't buy it. Or if you don't like certain comic books, don't review it. You know, if you, if you adhere to that philosophy, you wouldn't have a YouTube channel. You would you would be doing probably sports only. So you can't say that that you know you can't use that as an argument that oh if you don't like my channel to watch it because you know what number one people have the right to watch whatever they want to watch, and B just like you review comic books that 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 are of interest to you positive or negative, people have the right to review your channel or your videos positive or negative. It's the same right that you have. So you you can't go and say that oh they don't have the right they have as much right as you do. Anyway, which means uh, who gives people the right to hear what they want to hear, what they want to hear, and what they want don't want to hear. So, so, and I know at the same time people say, well, you know what, you censor your own channel, uh, you block people, you uh, delete comments. Okay, this is the part where he talks about the comment about about his mother, which again, no one has the right to to attack your family. I totally agree with that. I'm 100 percent with you on that one, comic book cut. Um. You know, uh, you don't you don't have to endure that. I totally get that, but not everybody that says anything about your channel has something to say about your mom or anything like that either. And you're blocking people who don't have those negative comments. They just have anything to, ha to say against you, even if it's constructive criticism. You have a major issue with it, and you block them. So it's not just nasty, un uncalled for comments like about your mom. It's just anybody that has anything to say about your person, about your person, about how you approach people and how you critique other people. And how arrogant you, you 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 are. But anyway, it shouldn't have been a situation where uh, uh, I may have to be a bad guy. And then there's a video saying I need humility. That's me. 
Have somebody say something bad about your mother and see if you have any humility after that. Uh, okay, but explain how, why you blocked the umbrella guy. He didn't say anything bad about your mom. So explain that. And, and explain why you blocked me on Twitter. Yeah, because you blocked me on Twitter. Explain that. I didn't say anything bad about your mother. So explain that. So that's not an excuse. I, that's To me, that's you. That's a kind of like a Bush League retort just for uh, using it as an excuse to block people. Not everybody has anything to say about your mom, but – you still block people, so that doesn't make it. That to me is not an excuse. But anyway, after that, I need humility. Humility, dude. We all need your humility. Okay, listen. We are all capable of falling. When when you build your 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 empire, your business, whatever, um, stomping on other people. Some people have done it and have succeeded for a short term, but eventually they go down and go down hard. Okay, they go down hard. What you're not understanding is you're not going to have a long lifespan on YouTube because of your attitude, of the way you just bring other people down, the way you critique other people, and then you refuse critique from other people. It's like you dish, but you can't take it. People see right through that, and, th and they're going to have something to say about it, and then you're going to just like continue to block people, continue to diminish your fan base or diminish your, your consumership because a lot of those people are potential consumers. And I followed you on Twitter because – you pre you presented yourself as somebody that was comic skate friendly. Um, you know I'm still subscribed to your YouTube channel, so you know you can't block me on YouTube. But again, it's like you're coming off as a butthurt individual. You, you and you don't have to defend what you do. You know you can you can be proud of what you do. You can be confident in what you do. You don't have to defend it, but then you don't have to be arrogant about it either. And again, it's like you have problems when, when people point certain things out to you, yet your channel is totally based on you critiquing other people's work, but then they can't critique your channel or your videos. I mean, you you can dish, but you can't take it. That doesn't make any sense. I'm I'm just telling you this because you can't ever get to a point in your life when things get so bad for you on your channel or in your your in in your comic book career, whatever you want to call it, and then it's like. You're wondering why it happened. And it's like, well, you weren't listening when people were telling you you're stepping on the wrong toes. Again, I, I look at my, my previous video on this, and I showed you the tweets from the umbrella guy where he says you blocked him. I showed you the tweets where you claimed a comics girl was a ruse, but then you go on your video saying, Oh, I, I genuinely hope feel sorry for her. And it's like, well, you didn't say that on Twitter. What you said on Twitter and then what you said on YouTube are two different things. You know, people see through that. People see right through that, and you need to like pick a side or stick to something and be consistent with it. No one can ever knock you for being consistent, but you center people who have something to say about you, but then you're like, oh, you know what's going to tell me what to say, what not to say on my channel. It doesn't make any sense. I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, um, you know, I mean, I could review the rest of your video, but I think I made my point, and I think that um, other people listening, uh, you know, I mean, they'll have an opinion, and if you have an opinion, please, you know, let me know what your opinion is in the comment section. Feel free to say what you have to say. Uh, I won't block you unless you curse or you, you get offensive, like Combo Cut said, where you start bringing up mothers and what have you. There, I will block you again. So I don't fault him for that, but then not every comment made was a comment about his mother. So that's not a to me, it's not a defense. It's not. Um, and again, referring to mediocre YouTube channels, well, dude, again, as I pointed out. Your channel is one of many that, that are like it. I'm not saying don't be proud of it, but your your spirit and attitude should should be different should be a lot better than what it is. I guarantee you if it was, you probably would have double the subscriber count. I guarantee that. I think if you had a better attitude, you you probably would have a lot more subscribers, a lot more view counts on your videos. And I'm not saying change your personality. Not at all. Um, uh, you need to bring your personality because that's what sells. But the way you conduct yourself is what's going to determine your longevity and your lifespan on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to Alazmat Comics on Instagram, where you can catch exclusive sneak peeks of Road Warrior Drake. You can also check out Alazmat Films on its own official Instagram page to keep up on the latest film projects and behind the scenes photos. Also, check out Alazmat Film and Comics on Twitter. And follow me on Television, where you can catch Alazmat Films feature films streaming online. You can follow my page. Share it with friends, or if you wish to make a donation to help fund my projects, it will be kindly appreciated. Thank you for your support.